Hello and welcome to Vitality Women Leading Audaciously. Today, my honored guest is Dara Marcus. She is an entrepreneur, also a mompreneur, my co host on our Clubhouse 3 p.m. Wednesdays, 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And she is a health and fitness enthusiast like me, and um, is also, you know, all things lifestyle and health oriented. And I'm just so excited to welcome her today to have her tell us her story and how she balances it all. Welcome, Dara. Hi, thank you so much. So happy to be here. <laughs> tell us your story. Tell us about how you came to find your path. Ah, uh, an interesting path it's been. <laughs> um, so, I have been in the health and wellness space for just over 15 years now, working on big brands, um, muscle and fitness, men's fitness, black surge shape, and on a huge uh, Met Expo event called the Mr. Olympia, um, working with lots of brands, helping them build, helping them grow through the years. And about two years ago, somebody presented an opportunity to me to say, you know, listen, we know that you know the health and wellness space. We have this new brand that's launching and we really think that you would be a great brand partner for this. And the category was athleisure wear. And at the time I knew from my experience on the day job that this was a category that was just exploding because now people weren't just wearing athleisure wear in the gyms. You know, it was really a lifestyle type of clothing line now. And they were like, here's an opportunity you can take it and run with it in any which way you want. And that really piqued my interest because I've never really had anything for myself. And it was an opportunity to have my own business without really the whole overhead and the headache of everything. So I can grow and learn from these experts, you know, really feeding me and giving me this opportunity to monetize something essentially that I was already doing. They're like, here, we have this clothing brand. Now we want you to just go out and wear and share it. And of course, being a girl's girl, I'm always sharing things that I love. So it was very natural for me to, you know, start telling my girlfriends, hey, check out this new brand I just found. And the brand is called Savvy. They're a premium lifestyle brand. And they started with athleisure wear. And the brand has definitely evolved now because not everybody's just staying in their leggings, but we have the loungewear and the layering pieces and the clothes for the women for work and for going out at night. And it's just been this incredible experience now to be able to have my own little baby that I've been growing on the side here. Mm, that's so exciting. It sounds like it's hitting some, some things that you just really love, like uh, sharing things that you love, wearing things that you love, you know, representing things that you love and, and building community around it, it sounds too. Yes, I know. We joke all the time that I came for the clothes because in true fashion as women, we love a good deal. So I get to shop at discount pricing um, every Friday, Fashion Friday. So I'm always privy to hot new things dropping. And then now I'm able to make an income from it, like I said, but yet I stay because it's not just about the clothes, it's really become about this community. And it's been incredible and motivating and to be with other like-minded women that want to feel good and look good and do good. Mm -hmm. Totally. I love that. <laughs> That's brilliant. I mean, it's a win-win for everybody. And it sounds like this opportunity just kind of landed in your lap. But um, tell me a little bit more about what was happening around that time when this opportunity presented itself. I'm just curious because um, this sounds somewhat recent. So like, what about all those years before that? Like you're a mom um, and you're a wife and, you know, I don't know if you were a full-time mom before that or if you had your day job, how satisfied you were. Just tell me a little bit more about kind of what, what happened before that. So I definitely worked full-time. I have one child. I like to say I was one and done. I have an 11 year old son and he's definitely a handful, but <laughs> tries my patience. It gives me strength every day. Mm. And so I was building my career. I always worked in the city and you know, I had, you know, my son and I had my time off, but I went right back to work. I knew I always wanted to work so that I can keep my mind busy. I like to be busy. I like to be challenged. So I've always had my hands in different things and you know, I've been waiting and looking for that right opportunity, I think. And I had had other things presented to me, but for whatever reason, this particular brand savvy really resonated with me because I love the fact that, you know, simply a instant gratification. I'm not trying to change somebody's regimen 
or waiting 30 days for results or things like that. It was, you're going to put on a pair of leggings and you're going to either love them or hate them. And so be it and go on about your business or whatever. But the point that the clothing could be so powerful that people could put something on and feel good. It was really exciting to me that I can empower women to feel good and then look good. And like we keep saying, go out and do good. So yeah, yeah. in my career, I had been in a male dominated world for 15 years. I'd be the sole woman at the dinner table who wanted to order dessert and eat the bread. All these fitness guys were like, car- no carbs, no desserts, no sweets. And, you know, that was very interesting for me for all the years you know, being around all these men. And I think that when this opportunity presented itself to be, you know, something within a dynamic of women, where sometimes women can be intimidating, this was a total different environment to me. I had never experienced where it was so open to help you and to show you how to grow and teach you the way and things like that. Because I just felt like, you know, I'm going through this grind, working for other people all the time, going through the motions. And now here's somebody saying, listen, we're going to show you the way and you can grow and do as you wish. And I was like, great, I could finally have something for myself. Yeah, that's so beautiful because it's really revealing to me about two years ago, less a year now and three months only. I just, I looked around at my life and I was like, everyone in my life was a man. I was working for men. I was working with men. All my friends were men. And my, it was actually my daughter. She's like, mom, why don't you have any girlfriends? And I was like, oh, well, my sister. She's like, that's not the same. <laughs> she was right. And so I made a like, and I, I said out like into the universe. I was like, you know, bring me some women. And, cause, and I realized like, what is this about? And I was like, oh, I think in the past I've been involved with women who I couldn't I couldn't really be my full self. Like I had to dumb myself down. There was jealousy, backstabbing, gossip. It was just complicated. So I think I just like said, okay, I'm just not going to be friends with women because it's just not going to work. But like you're describing in the last year or so, I've, I've found so many women that are just so interested in, in uh, mentoring me and showing me the way and sharing their experiences and lifting me up. And it's like, it's so wonderful. And I get such deep nurturing from them in ways men could never provide for me. Um, and so I can really relate to what you're sharing. And I think it's so powerful, right? So funny that you say that, that you're getting all this from the women, because I joke with my girlfriends all the time, you know, listen, we all complain about our husbands here and there and so forth. And everybody wants to find their soulmate, but we're like, maybe like not to sound cliche, like the sex in the city episodes, but really maybe our girlfriends are our soulmates, mm. not necessarily. Sometimes they really provide, you know, another level that a man never can. Mm, Yeah. And I think that's just made by nature. You know, it's just, it is just that, um, that's so beautiful. So it sounds like, uh, it really came as, um, I don't know, it wasn't like you were begging for it, but some part of you was calling for it. It sounds like Like sometimes you're just on autopilot for so long and you don't even realize, and it's like, you need that little push to do something. And it was like, when people say the time just right. That when it's like, I, it took me a split second to say, yes, I never even touched an article of the clothing. Didn't even look at the line. I literally had watched an eight minute video and was like, where do I sign up on there? Oh, wow. But I love what you said, like having something of your own, you know, women in the last couple of years have been, you know, the chief chef, the chief, you know, education officer, they've been the chief household, you know, like housekeeper, they've had to do everything. And so few of them have come back to the workforce after, you know, post COVID, not that we're necessarily officially post COVID, <laughs> but uh, just saying that um, it's, it's pretty exciting to think that you could have something of your own. I know so many women who feel the same way. They just want something of their own and something they can share, which it sounds like you have. Very fortunate. And also, like you were saying, the timing that this came about really was in the middle. It was the first summer of COVID. And listen, the day job was definitely quiet and, you know, not on purpose, but we kind of say that it was sort of like this perfect storm for Savvy to launch because they launched the brand, you know, not knowing that the world was going to shut down and we'd be in a major pandemic. So it really was twofold because they set out on a mission that they're like, we're going to launch this brand. You know, we know this athleisure wear category is booming and we want to be part of it. And then the fact that two months after they launched the world shut down, they were like, oh my God, 
you know, not to take advantage of a crisis in the world, but the fact that they were able to actually help people because many women, like you said, had to stay home and be the teacher now. Um, and, or many people were being laid off because jobs were just, you know, going awry. So this offered so many women the opportunity that people were hopping on being like, wait, I could stay home and school my child and, you know, pop online and, you know, sh share a new sweatsuit outfit I'm wearing or talk about the leggings I wore in my morning workout. This is great. You know, no brainer. So it really afforded many people an opportunity to work from home and make an income. And also, not only that, just sort of open our eyes, especially me that, you know, growing up now in this day and age, you know, you need to have a rainy day fund or it's not a mistake to think about having, you know, a second stream of income. It's so important. Yeah. For our independence and just for our integrity and our self-worth. It's just whether you need it or not, it's just great to have it. Right. Everyone needs it though. <laughs> even, it doesn't matter how rich you are, even everyone. It's just <laughs> really, it's just um, always necessary. Totally. Yeah. So um, how do you balance it all? Like mother, wife, um, working, uh, how do you balance it all? Because uh, there are many demands on you and, and all of our time. So we're just curious, how do you kind of find, strike your flow or your balance or however you might call it? You know, it's interesting because sometimes I feel like there's not enough hours in the day, but right. really try to pride myself, especially the last few months on being consistent. You know, I really try to dedicate, you know, time for every little thing and be present in that moment because, you know, listen, when my hum's, my son's at school, I'm working away doing what I have to, but it's like, I don't want him to have to come in and then I'm still at work and not listen to what he wants to tell me or not be able to help him with his homework and stuff, which is also why, you know, I love having the opportunity to have my own business because I can watch a soccer game and quickly send a text message, you know, or I can be in the carpool line waiting for him to come out of, you know, whatever practice or activity and shoot somebody an email real fast. So I want to be available and I really try to be grounded and centered and be present in what I'm doing at that moment so mm. that I'm yeah. not in the place all the time because yeah. it is center myself because I feel like I'm running in all directions. Yeah. How do you center yourself? What is, what does that look like in your world? Um, well, I've really been good about drinking more water, which sounds simple and, and ridiculous, but I just have to slow down. I, I feel like I don't drink. I get so dehydrated. I'm so fast. So I've been consciously really trying to drink more water throughout the day and just take deep breaths. Like sometimes I need to just pause mm -hmm. and like close my eyes for a few minutes, you know, to move before I move on to the next thing. So I can be fully focused because like you said, I am, you know, all over the place. So I'm like dedicating my time to be consistent, you know, at this period to do this and then moving on to the next thing and then moving on to the next thing, but being able to like take that deep breath, drink my water throughout the day. And I definitely, every day requires a workout to release that energy. Oh yeah, for me too, that's so important. Even when I'm kind of grumpy, my daughter will be like, mom, just you gotta like, when are you doing yoga? I'm like, right, right, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I mean, it's it is your mood all together. <laughs> yeah, but then again, if you do you exercise that makes you aggressive, you can do that. Like if you're doing hardcore stuff, it can also make you kind of aggressive, but that's a topic for another time. <laughs> um, um, additionally, um, how do you um, restore? Like if you are feeling really low on energy, what do you do to kind of boost yourself or re-energize re or resource yourself? That's a good question. Um, ironically, even though you're saying, I feel like I do push myself, like even on Sunday, I was like, it's going to be my rest day. I'm not going to work out. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And I push myself. I'm like, I have to do something because I don't drink any caffeine. I was drinking. I'm definitely, I drink a lot of alcohol, but that's for a different conversation, the wine and my cocktails to get me through. But the really the exercise. I really, whether it's, even if it's just like a calming yoga class that I just need to like kind of stretch. So I feel better. Or if I'm like, I need to jump on the treadmill and do a run, I have to do something to like, kind of make myself, you know, find my way and just, you know, restore myself by re-energizing. And mm. that's what I 
Interesting. Yeah, it looks different for everyone. I've, I've been fascinated on the show to hear all the different iterations of, of what we do to, re, to re-energize ourselves. And I think that most people just don't give themselves permission to do whatever it is that resources and stuff. For some people, it's reading a book. Other people, it's taking a nap. Some people, it's watching Netflix. Some people, it's a yoga class, you know, so everyone's really different. And I think it's you know, this question for our listeners is really just a reminder that whatever it is that your go-to is going to be to refuel yourself. Some people it's alone time. Some people it's together time, whatever it is, like honor that and make know, time for it. I would say, since I started talking with you, you've really opened my eyes that, you know, like you said, I really feel that people don't give themselves a the permission and we are all so busy and running and whatever. And that's why I, like my mom's always like, you're go, go, go. When do you relax? And I'm almost like, I don't let myself fully crash. It's like, like I said, I take that two minute little like deep breath, you know, maybe I'm checking out my social media or whatever, sitting, closing my eyes to just like, okay, focus on what I'm going to do next. So I can really be present in that moment. But otherwise it's like, I just got to keep pushing myself to just keep going forward. But I feel like we were talking about sleep and this, that, and the other, and you really helped me like open my eyes that it's okay to, you know, really disconnect and just take a time out. And it's okay if I'm not going to be able to do everything every day, but in my mind, I'm so regimented all the time that I have to be consistent and show up every day to do this and every day to do that. Yeah. Us high-performing women have to be really careful um, because there's that fine line between aggression and cultivating masculine energy and the receiving of being in our feminine energy and then preserving our health and, and vitality, our youth. And we, it's so funny. It's like, you know, high performers type A's like us, like we have to force ourselves to kind of, you know, stop. Uh, whereas people who aren't like us, you know, it's different, right? It's a different, um, for, I always say like everything's medicine, right? Your yoga is medicine, your food is medicine, your thoughts are medicine <laughs> and um, or your fitness is medicine. Like whatever you're practicing is your strongest medicine. That's always like what I say. And it's so, it's so interesting. We have to know ourselves and just be willing to be honest with ourselves, myself included. It's been, it's been really hard for me just to kind of like, it's like, you know, you know, I imagine like a freight train or some like really heavy, fast train. And then like, just like putting the brakes on and like, you know, how it takes miles and miles to, and there's like smoke and there's this loud noise and it, you know, it's like, stop the train. No, it's so true. <laughs> Cause I feel like a superwoman. That's actually my nickname in my, in my circle is like a gutless guru and, um, and superwoman. So even my sister celebrated me this weekend as an early birthday and uh she toasted she's like two you know my sister who was really superwoman (laughs) it was so cute but Uh but i used to like it be really um proud of that and now i'm like oh i'm not sure that's in my highest and best good you know highest good so it's really interesting how we grow and get wiser yeah and that's funny because I feel like you would want to wear that as an, a badge of honor. But like you said, we're getting older. So sort of things change where you're like, maybe I don't have to do everything all the time and be the superpower and just kind of scale it back a little. and take the. Yeah. And then there's a question of like, when's enough enough? And can I, can I, can I be so loving to myself that I'm not doing to cover up my lack of self-worth? And it was really actually my daughter that's helped me to learn that. Not so much about my self-worth, but like, mom, it's enough. Like, this is, this is really good. Or, you know, like, you should really take a break. You work so hard. Or, you know, it's eight o'clock. Can you close your computer now? Or, you know, like, it's really, it, she's really helped me to kind of remind myself like, oh, right. <laughs> it's like, the, like I said, the hours fly by and then you're like, so it's so great that she's young enough to recognize and tell you that. Yeah, I don't know if that's responsible. Some people listening might be like, that's probably not the best thing. She shouldn't be parenting you. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is, single moms, we, we do the best we can. <laughs> oh, so any, um, any words of wisdom? Oh, wait, I'd love to, is there anything you'd like our listeners to do? I mean, I'd love for you guys to, um, to come and join us on Clubhouse for uh, an interactive, exclusive conversation. If you need an invite for that, just email me and I will get you an invite. If you're not on Clubhouse, get on Clubhouse. It's so much fun. Um, Dara, anything else you'd like the listeners to, to do to be able to find you, learn more about you and what you do? 
Yeah, please definitely check out my Savvy page. It's Savvy.com, S-A-V-V-I.com backslash Dara Marcus, D-A-R-A-M-A-R-K-U-S. And uh, shop around, check out the clothing. And what's great about the brand is that they don't just reward, you know, me as a partner, but you as a customer, you know, if you're wearing and sharing the brand, you know, you can get credits added to your account as well. So, you know, they're all about supporting women and empowering them. And it's just a brand that we like to say loves you back. So Mm -hmm. I'd love to share more information on Savvy with any of the listeners who are looking to just get some new great clothing and try a new fabulous brand or like, you know, me building a business or having a side hustle, you know, and make some extra income because the brand is really um, a luxury exclusive brand, but it's affordable pricing and it's truly sustainable, you know, fashion. So mm, lovely. Okay. So how does it measure up with my Lulu's? Give me the bottom line. Well, we'd like to say that we're Lulu quality, but less expensive. Mm, um, so it's going to hug me in all the right places and fit my curves. Yeah. And it's going to probably fit better too, because we fit on real women. So it's very flattering. They, you know, know where to nip and tuck everything so that you're totally uh, hidden and feel good and secure in all the places you want to be. (laughs) Nice. And they hold their shape and they wash well. Yeah, absolutely. It's not fast fashion. We say that, you know, you're going to be able to wash the clothes over and over again, and they're going to retain their same shape and color and size and so forth. Mm, I love that. That's so exciting. Well, I got to check it out. I haven't checked it out, folks. So I'm, love, I'm on my way. Yeah, I love when I get the Lulu converts, the text messages being like, all right, you finally got me. When <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's incredible. I mean, I used to be in the fashion industry, actually. I don't know if you know that, um, but for about 10 years, no, not 10 years, longer. So from 18 to when I uh, came back to the United States, which was... Um, about 10 years ago. So yeah, for my entire adult life, uh, up until about a decade ago, I was in the fashion industry. So I know a lot about that business. Good person to like a product tester for me to check out the line and give the feedback. I'll have to send you some goodies. <laughs> I, would, I would be so excited because I do. I live in yoga pants. It's the truth. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm not like proud to admit it, but it's the truth. Like I put on jeans and I'll be like, Oh, like an actual zipper. <laughs> button and I know I'm not alone I know women who are listening are gonna be laughing because it's true it's like oh my gosh um it's yeah yeah it's just a new paradigm now I say we, you have your workout leggings you have your day leggings and then you have your fancy leggings <laughs> totally totally they're wearing to go out these days to you know with boots and you know you know from fashion I'm sure that you know they're not just for the gym anymore that's absolutely true. And uh, the ones that are for the gym really need to be engineered and you, you can tell the difference and you're just like, this is just not the right pant for this workout. You know, you've got right. the ones for jogging, the ones for yoga, the ones for Pilates, you have like all the different ones, the ones for like hiking. Yeah. That's why when people are like, how many leggings do you need? I'm like, what do you mean? There's the colors for season and the functionality. There's yeah. different leggings. For different activities when it's windy outside when it's cold outside <laughs> when you're layering I mean it's like it's on and on and on so it's just like there's no end to it um Dara any last words of wisdom for our listeners um I would just say like it's never too late like you know I'm mid 40s this opportunity got dropped in my lap and you know I'm running with it because I really like we said I'm really enjoying having something of my own, having a team to be with me and um, grow this business. I'm enjoying wearing and sharing the incredible clothes and I'm really loving being part of this incredible community. Mm, So great. Yeah, it's never too late. I heard that. And we just have to keep trying, right? To keep finding our joy, keep following our delight. And um, to everyone who's listening, be well. And thank you for being here. Thank you.